All right, we've got stocks roaring back today. It's a nice way to start a Monday, right? After suffering the worst week in two years. You can see we are just off the highs of the session. You have nearly every stock, except for Disney and GE, in the green right now on the Dow 30. The Dow extending Friday's gains now up, uh, well, what, 400 points, more than 400 points, 474 in today's trading session. Joining me right now on set is Bonson Group founder and author of Crisis of Responsibility, David Bonson. Also here, M&D Partners, Tim Anderson, who's down the floor of the nice for us right now. And uh, let's start with you, David. You got a new book out, Crisis of Responsibility. Let's get to that in a moment. But first of all, this market, I mean, it, it's roaring back here. Uh, did you expect this? Well, I wouldn't have said uh, timing, but certainly it was just way overdone last week. Now, it also was overdue. I mean, a correction had been a long time coming, and I think the way that it accelerated throughout the week, it just sort of demonstrated so much irrationality that it meant we were kind of due for a bounce back. Uh, it happened too quickly. It almost would have been a little scarier if we had had a series of 300-point days, not a bunch of, not two different thousand-point down I, days. I kind of agree with you. Tim Anderson, was that because, in part, uh, uh, all those, you know, algorithms that were, were coming into play there that we had so much volatility last week? Well, it certainly feels like that was a, a, a big part of the decline on the downside. And sometimes when the, uh, when the computers and the algorithms get out of control on the downside, a lot of the natural buyers walk away mm -hmm. to see how steep the decline might become. Now, Today, you know, we, we were looking to have a lot more volatility still again this week. Maybe not to the extremes of last week. Uh, we're off to a good start. We're watching the 2680 level, 2700 level very closely on the S&P. That's the level that we failed at in the rally last Wednesday. So and that also marks just a close to about the halfway point of the all-time highs from two and a half weeks ago and the lows from last week. So if we were to be able to get through that level on the S&P, it would be positive. All right. Well, uh, things are looking up. I mean, so you would have made a big mistake, by the way, if you had sold last week. And, and I'll just remind everybody here what I told you. Uh, don't do anything because the fundamentals of our economy are very strong. The fundamentals are improving, and, and I agree with you, David. A correction uh, is healthy, it's necessary, and we could still even correct a little bit from here, but you have to be very careful about trying to time this market. You sure do. I think you have to distinguish between an investor and a trader in this environment. An investor, you'd say, well, a 2.85% 10-year yield is causing this. I mean, it makes no sense. You have a very healthy economy. You have... Where else are you going to go, by the way? It's well, not like you can go right into bonds because it's still only 2.85%. And, and so much for that idea, year. too, that, oh, the U.S. is overheated, but Europe and Japan, well, it was totally correlated. Europe and Japan broke last week as well. So it was a classic risk off. Mm -hmm. And I think that the way you saw the selling accelerate at the end of the day on those real bad days, yeah. it's part of this huge volume of ETFs. They have to have bids out there. There were no bids, but they had to make orders. Ah. That's a big part of it. Big right. part of it. Um, tell me a little bit about the book, Crisis of Responsibility. It essentially came out of my extensive study of the financial crisis. It's my belief that there were a lot of bad actors in the crisis, but that we also have to look at the culture itself, not get, put all the blame on Wall Street and, and K Street. The government has their mm -hmm. culpability, but I think that the culture itself needing a little refresher in individual responsibility. See, that was a decade ago, and uh, the, the one advantage of having a... Uh, you know, been covering these markets uh, for as many years as I have, is that I went through that, you went through that, we all went through that, right, Tim Anderson? Um, and we know what it was like to really have a systemic crisis. Mm. When you saw the fundamentals really deteriorating and you had the credit crisis on your hands, that was a very different kind of feeling than, say, what you had in the markets last week, wasn't it? Oh, categorically different. I mean, it, the numbers are almost just, of course, the points, the denominator, you say it down a thousand, it's a big deal, mm -hmm. but but it, it's a different level than where we were. And as you point out, the credit crisis, you know the corporate spreads last week came in? They were yeah, thinner? Yeah, I noticed that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of risk off selling is that? Right. It, it was a categorically different situation, but for those of us who lived through September, October of 08, <laughs> those are not moments we'll ever forget. You know, and Tim, I remember talking to you last week, and it didn't sound like there was real hysteria there on the floor. I mean, people were sort of saying, okay, well, you know, a little correction here maybe, um, but it's not as though, you know, it's a 2008 all over again. It's certainly something we can handle. 
No, it's certainly not. I mean, for people who weren't around then, I mean, that went on for months, literally. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has gone on now, this went on for two weeks so far. So you really have to do put it in perspective, as, as David says. And, and, and this is really, look, bull markets are, are defined uh, typically by long periods of a market grinding higher with a few very sharp, very steep corrections after which the market finds itself, the buyers gather their confidence again, and then we uh, continue on and go a little bit higher. We'll see if that really happens well, again this that, time. That's the normal push-pull. you got to have that yin-yang. What are you doing with a market that only keeps going higher by 200 points every day? That's not we, normal. We either. wouldn't make any money as equity investors <laughs> if there was no volatility. That's where we get our risk premium from. True. Well, hopefully people uh, were able to find some bargains last week. It's good to see you guys. David, congratulations on the book. Thank you, Tim Anderson.